Our market monitor this week says the market will continue its record run higher, adding another 5 to 7 percent on both the Dow and the S&P 500 from here. He's Jim Lowell, Chief Investment Officer at Advisor Investments. Mr. Lowell, welcome. Make your case for why you see uh, stocks going higher even after such a big run-up in 2013. Well, before I make that case, let me just say that after heaping the gains this year, I wouldn't be surprised to see the market take an immediate diet of 5% or so. But the reality is there's no negative news, no negative data, either in terms of earnings or economic reports that we're seeing, especially here in our consumer-driven economy, that has us thinking that somehow this market's going to be significantly derailed over the next month, quarter, uh, really throughout next year. We see the possibility of gaining ground, uh, albeit with some slips along the way. There are still some Washington issues out there, Jim. Uh, obviously, a new <laughs> Fed chief. Uh, there's a, a debt, another debt ceiling debate. There's going to be another continuing resolution. Could those things cause the market to stumble or uh, in any, anything more than a temporary way? I doubt it could be in anything more than a temporary way. We do have the Yellen safety net, which means stimulus remains the rule, not the exception. That's good news for the marketplace overall. That said, we know that Washington, D.C. has a nasty habit of tr throwing a monkey wrench into the financial engines. Mm -hmm. But the market's already had several object lessons about why it shouldn't price those missteps into itself. You know, uh, it's been a great year for NASDAQ. It's been a great year for the smaller stocks, the Russell 2000. But your picks are all large cap. Uh, sort of baseline kinds of companies, beginning with Ford. Why do you think these kinds of companies will outperform? And, and take us through your argument for Ford. Well, I think overall we're, we're a little bit nervous about the small and mid-cap names that have clearly led the charge this year in particular, and certainly momentum-oriented stocks are something that we're, we're a little bit leery of. When you look at Ford, it's not just a pure play on its own numbers. It's certainly reasonably valued. Uh, it's got a good dividend yield, 2.35%, uh, but it is up 30-plus percent year-to-date. It's a play on the U.S. consumer and the housing recovery. Uh, only an architect drives onto a construction site in a Prius, uh, so <laughs> we know that they're selling, they're selling their trucks at fairly good clips. Highly profitable to them here at home, but there's also a nice play for Ford globally, and in particular inside the Eurozone, which pretty much everyone has written off, especially from a car sales perspective. They've begun to see a turn towards the better there. They can clearly capitalize on it down the road. All right, lightning round time. you got two more picks. One is Amazon. <laughs> Explain why. Well, I'm not going to bet against the U.S. consumer nor the global one. I get everything from kindling from my fireplace to Fiji water to my, uh, <clears throat> to my rare books from Amazon. So uh, I think that trend continues. They also are continuing to uh, innovate. Uh, they've done a beta test with Sunday sales. I expect we will see Amazon 24 by 7 being a net benefit, not just as a big box store, but also for small businesses that could put their products in their pipeline. And speaking of big box stores, Home Depot is your third and final choice. Can't swing a hammer these days without wanting to look over at Home Depot or Lowe's for that matter. Home Depot yielding about 1.81%. Uh, certainly seems to me to be a grower, uh, not just now, but throughout next year. The reality is if you bought a new home, if you are looking to maybe upgrade your home to sell it in the spring selling season next year, or you've just moved into an apartment, chances are you're going to be going to Home Depot to get something to hang on the walls or mm -hmm. build a wall with. Do you have any disclosures about these three stocks that you mentioned? Well, they're certainly uh, inside of some of the uh, mutual funds and exchange-traded funds that we own for our clients at Advisor Investments. And uh, so far, I'm thankful that they are. All right, Jim Lowell, thank you very much. Jim is Chief Investment Officer at Advisor Investments.